Hi, in this chapter we are going to talk about substring search algorithms and first of all we are going to focus on brute force approach. So what's the aim as far as substring search is concerned? We would like to construct an algorithm that's capable of finding a given pattern in a given text. And this feature is quite common in nowadays softwares. For example, we have this Notepad++ and for example, we would like to find something. I would like to find a word, for example, public. So in this case, the public is going to be the pattern. And as you can see, Notepad++ is going to find that given pattern in the given text. What's the text? The text is basically all the strings in that given file. So this is what we are after. We would like to end up an algorithm that's going to find the given patterns in a given text as efficient as possible. Of course, brute force approach is not going to be as efficient, but anyways, let's take a look at it. Brute force search is the naive approach. It is very, very intuitive. We keep iterating through the text, and if there is a mismatch, we shift the pattern one step to the right. It is not so efficient, especially when there are lots of matching prefixes. For example, we have the pattern DDD and the character E at the end, and we have the text lots of lots of D characters and a single character E at the end. So the main problem is that it needs backup for every mismatch. If there is a mismatch, we jump back to the next character, and that's why there are going to be lots of compares n time m, where n is the length of the text, m is the length of the pattern we are looking for. So that's why the running time complexity will be ordo n times m. And a linear time guarantee would be better. This is why more complicated and more complex substring search algorithms came to be, such as the Boyer-Moore algorithm. Because with the help of the Boyer-Moore, we are able to reduce this ordo n times m running time to linear running time, ordo n plus m, instead of ordo n times m. Okay. So let's take a look at a concrete example. We have the text, this is a test, and we have a pattern. We are looking for the test word in the given text. Okay, we keep comparing the first characters, so the first character of the pattern and the character in the text accordingly. It is a match, so we keep considering the next character. It is a mismatch, so we keep making one step to the right as far as the pattern is concerned. Again, it is a mismatch, so we keep going to the right, mismatch, we go to the right, mismatch, and so on, and we keep iterating until we bump into the situation when all the characters are matching. So for example, in this case, the first characters are matching, then the second characters are matching, then the third characters are matching, and the last characters are matching. So when we have considered every single character of the pattern, it means that it is a match. We have found a pattern in the original text. So the source code is quite intuitive. We have a text, we have a pattern, we get the length of the text and the length of the pattern. We iterate through until the length of text minus length of pattern. So we iterate through all the single characters of the text. And what's very important, that we don't have to consider, so that's why length of text minus length of pattern, because if we have, for example, three characters at the end of the text, it's not going to match the pattern, because we know for certain that the number of characters in the pattern is greater than three, for example. So that's why we don't have to consider every single character of the text, just length of text minus length of pattern index. Okay. And then we make an inner for loop, and we just iterate through the pattern, and if they are not matching, we break out. Anyways, we know that if the j is equal to the length of pattern, we return i, because we have managed to consider every single character of the pattern, so we know that it is a match, we return i, what's the i? i is the first character of the matching pattern in the text, so in this case, the index of the character t. Okay, so again, we iterate through the whole text character by character, 
On every iteration we check whether the two characters are matching or not, if it's a mismatch we break out, and it means we have found a pattern in the text because no mismatching character has been found. Okay, and anyways we return length of the text, what does it mean? That the given text does not contain the given pattern. In this case, we are not able to find it, of course. We have considered every single character in the text, so basically we return the length of the text. Okay, it means that the pattern is not present in the text. Okay. So what's the problem with brute force search? When, for example, we have a situation like this, we have the text and we have the pattern. There are going to be lots of lots of matches before the mismatch. In this case, we have to backtrack and shift the pattern one to the right. Again, there are going to be lots of lots of matches before the mismatch. Again, we shift the pattern one step to the right. Again, there are going to be several matches before the mismatch, so we have to shift it. And in this case, okay, we are able to find the given pattern in the given text. So the brute force approach is going to be fine, but it's going to be very slow as you can see, because we are going to make an enormous amount of comparisons before finding the pattern in the given text. And this is what we are able to avoid with the help of the Boyer-Moore algorithm, for example. So this is the theory behind the brute force substring search algorithm. Thanks for watching.